My first job after my PhD program, because I finished last year, 2021, was um, is, I'm currently in the role now, an assistant professor of language literacy and culture at the University of Washington. Um, and I really got drawn to this position because of, um, I remember when someone shared it with me, the job description, they focused, there was something that really, it seems small, but it was big to me, but like they focused on um, their commitment to black languages, because my research focuses on um, black African immigrant youth and languages and literacy. So seeing that in like the job description, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a great, I guess, sign. And um, so that drew me to the university. And then when I, you know, got invited to do the um, job talk and the virtual campus visit, just the warmth that I felt while meeting with the faculty, the staff, it just felt even though it was all virtual, I could feel the warmth through the screen. And I was like, this seems like a place where I would want to be. So one thing I noticed immediately once I got into this role is that there's a lot of flexibility. Um, so a lot of my day, my days, really much my week pretty much are kind of structured around my teaching days, as well as just meetings, perhaps sometimes standard meetings that are on the schedule. And so a typical day, um, I realized I had to kind of take a step back, a big picture step back and kind of create what I wanted my week or days to look like. So I have what are called teaching days. I have my like research writing days, which I try to get in three times a week, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending on you know what my classes are looking like my class schedule is. And then I also have, and I got this good advice from someone is to kind of really block all of my meetings on one day. So I'll have like my meeting day. Um, and that's where I'm usually like meeting with other faculty, other colleagues, also advising, meeting with students, um, off, holding office hours, as well as uh, perhaps just like maybe meeting with community members, just different, you know, people who are in the greater Seattle area. So I kind of like created because of that flexibility, um, and there's like no guidelines around how to use my time. I just sat back and thought to myself, well, a typical day, like I think about like on my writing day, you know, I'll wake up, you know, and, you know, do my own personal things. And then I'll have like a block of time, you know, like a three hour, you know, writing block that I'll block out, write, take a break. And that's important to me to like breathe, catch up with family, talk to, you know, my partner, go for a walk, do something, you know, come back to the writing or maybe um, spend some time prepping for teaching. So and then on a teaching day, that's a day where I'm, you know, kind of just like in a, you know, really fast kind of state and just, you know, doing those last minute details and tweaks to my teaching preparation um, on campus in my first quarter. But like now it, the last one was virtual. So you know, just and every day looks different because I'm in a different headspace depending on what the goals are and the focus is for that day. I know a huge part of helping me to transition in my current role was um, building new relationships and really relying on mentorship from established relationships that I had already because I wasn't quite sure what to expect at all. And, you know, just thinking about some connections and um, that I've made through like my virtual job talk, uh, people who were really generous in reaching out to me at my current university. So reaching out to them and saying, you know, I know I'm, you know, I'm teaching this class or, you know, do you have any advice or how are you, especially during the COVID um, with the pandemic, like how are you communicating with your students around this? Would you be willing to share like, you know, your introduction email with me? So I would say asking questions was a huge strategy for me with really thinking about um, making with making that transition and you know reaching out to mentors who I already had established relationships with and like well, what was it like you know during your first year as an assistant professor do you have any tips and um, you know talking to people across and I also you know took it with you know thinking that this was their experience but thinking and remembering that my experience is also unique to me so um but i would say asking questions was definitely the number one strategy and if i were to offer any recommendations for uh you know people making that same transition into a role similar to mine i would say to really rely on you know your community and um to remember that you can't do it alone and I think especially as, you know, doctoral students, we're, we're trained to do the research, we're trained to do the teaching, we're trained to really do that intellectual work and, um, and the intellectual part of this, this work and this job. But I think it's critical to really think about how can I, you know, 
really lean into my community to navigate this new system, this new institution, because it is a new place. Every culture, I think about the culture of UT Austin is very different from the culture here at the University of Washington, and it's all new for me. And so I'm constantly having to reach out to people, um, you know, and be vulnerable and, you know, enough to say, hey, I'm trying to figure this thing out. Um, and re reminding myself that yes, though I'm Dr. Lakia Omegan, there are things that I'm still learning. There are, um, you know, resources that I still need, there are conversations that I still need to have. And the other thing that I would recommend, and I'm still kind of making this transition now, is to really assume and to step into that role and make that shift from student to now professional. Um, I think you spend five years in a PhD program and you are, you know, someone's directing and leading and guiding that process for you. And I just remember when I first started, it's like, oh wait, like, well, who's gonna tell me how to use my time or who's gonna help me to, you know, you know, check on this email that I'm writing to my students. And I was like, I had a really good mentor, again, reaching out to people, it's like, you're the one who's gonna make those decisions. So like, you know, stepping into that. And, and I would say being patient with yourself while you're making that transition and shifting from graduate student to now, uh, you know, a new assistant professor. I would say that um, I got a lot of research experience at UT Austin, um, a lot of collaboration. So like from the moment that I got in, lots of faculty had group research projects. So I kind of went through this process of being in a group setting to like being um, prepared to, you know, do my individual dissertation research. So lots of research experience. And I would say now as an assistant professor with, you know, writing, I, I have a lot of confidence and I find myself that even sometimes when I'm you know, questioning how to navigate all these new things, I do rely on the skills um, that I got from UT Austin in my PhD program that really guides my writing and, and just a, a confidence that I have with that. I also got a lot of teaching experience um, at UT Austin. And I, it's not to me looking back, it wasn't just teaching experience, but it was really um, understanding and getting a sense of like ways to work with students, uh, ways to build relationships with students. Um, you know, what does the beginning of the semester look like, the middle and the, the end? So I feel like because I got a lot of that teaching experience, I was able to anticipate what that, you know, could could be or feel like at the University of Washington. So um, I felt very comfortable stepping into my role as um, with, with teaching. And then finally, um, I would say that a lot of what I did at UT Austin is very much similar to like what I'm doing now. Again, the research teaching meetings. And so it kind of felt like a seamless transition into this role um, as it relates to like the tasks and the functions um, that I do like on a daily basis. So it feels like a continuation of it. Right now it's so different because we've spent the last, you know, since March, 2020, we've been virtual, we've been, um, you know, what learning and teaching looks like or has been like is very different from what it was like when I started my, my PhD program at UT Austin. So I think the first thing is like thinking about like what that learning experience could have been like for someone coming out of a PhD program and their experience. I think perhaps having a bit more grace and understanding that things look different in the world right now, I probably would start there. And then um, I think of course, like, you know, what what is their research experience, their teaching experience? Um, um, and kind of just looking at ways that they perhaps have engaged with service. I think that's one of the more obvious things that I would look at, but I also think more than that and beyond that is really thinking about how is this potential candidate positioning themselves relationally? Like, so I would be looking for ways that they perhaps have collaborated with people, maybe experiences like willing to hear about experiences that they have had with, um, with students, maybe not in a traditional teaching uh, capacity, but experience in the relationships that they've had with students. Um, I also would be willing, I know that they would, you know, be coming and bringing their expertise in, and that's really important, right? How do they talk about that? How do they own that? Because again, making that shift from um, graduate student to now a professional, you know, assistant professor. So, you know, just um, showcasing a sense of ownership around that. And um, I would say to balance that out too, to really come in, um, in position, you know, just thinking about how are you thinking about the surrounding community around the university? How are you looking to, you know, learn um, and integrate the resources of, of, of the university within the work that you see yourself doing? 
and projects and, and you know relationships that you'll build as a new professor. I found that my experience as a first generation BIPOC student, but more specifically a black woman, that it it was something that I could not I mean, it's the lens through which I saw everything and experienced everything. And so initially I found myself, especially through my courses in the beginning, you know, just trying to, you know, just think about, oh, this is work and I'm just, you know, learning this thing and I just need to get this assignment done. And, you know, thank you to my dissertation chair and lots of mentors that I've had who are also black women. They just, you know, who told me and they said that, you know, you can't, I, I felt like I really struggled with like, trying to separate the personal from the professional. And, you know, she just told me, she said, the personal is the professional. So she really helped me um, see that, like, it's more than okay to bring my experiences, my identity to this work. Because I also had, unfortunately, like an experience where in my first year, where I talked about that I wanted to focus on, you know, Nigerian immigrant youth and, you know, someone, a professor, I think well-meaning, wasn't particularly sure how, you know, this, would, she, she told me, I'm not sure how this would contribute to the field of literacy research. And so that sent me on a trajectory of thinking like, oh man, like, you know, I'm a, a new first year doc student. And I'm like, okay, well, am I, maybe I should do something else that's not, you know, connected to me, my identity, my lived experiences. And, and again, thankfully, again, for mentorship and, you know, people in, in my community who were, you know, faculty who kind of took me under their wings and reminded me like, you know, come back to that, that does matter. So my experience as a, you know, first gen, you know, and I didn't have the luxury of being able to call my 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 parents on the phone and say like, hey, mommy, what do you think of this? I'm thinking about this project. You know, I didn't come from a lineage of like professors or not even like, you know, college graduates. So um, a lot of me navigating this as a graduate student, again, I think that's why relationships are so important to me because I've built like an, a professional family, an academic family um, of people to really help me to navigate and move through all of this. And so that's what my experience was like as a graduate student. I was really lucky to have lots of people who just affirmed my work, who affirmed the way that I approached my teaching, the ideas and things that I brought to my work, again, personally, and it, and it mattered. And I would say now, as a um, first year assistant professor, still coming back to my identity, first gen, first professor in my family, you know, um, still thinking about my identity as a black woman, even more so as an African Nigerian woman. Um, I think I have a little bit, a, a little bit more confidence. Like I'm coming in now and saying like, you know, this matter and I'm, and my colleagues are really great at, you know, making space for my voice and saying, you know, like, yeah, what do you think? And we, you know, we do value your perspective. We do value your opinion. We want to hear what you have to say, you know, your vision or your ideas around these things. So that definitely helps. But I bring that to my work now with my students when I'm teaching and when I'm advising, I just remind them like your lived experiences matter. And sometimes, you know, there are meetings with me and they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, let's talk about what you do know. Let's start from the place, you, you, you know, your starting place of what you do know. Um, and so like, well, I'm thinking about researching this, but I don't know. It feels too close to home. And I'm like, that's fine. There's a way to do this, right? This is a community that you're, you know, invested in it's your community and that's okay to bring that a part of your you know academic and professional journey so i spend a lot of time um thinking about that and i would say that um as i was thinking about going into academia i i, I tell people now that my feet are in the academy but my heart has always been in the community and um i see a lot of what i do you know at the university of washington washington through my scholarship through my research through my teaching i see it as a bridge to the communities, you know, that I that I come from. I was raised, born in New York, raised in Detroit. And so I'm always thinking, not just this work, you know, when I have my days that I sit down and I'm writing and I'm and doing all these things. It's like, okay, how does this connect? And how can I bring this back to the Seattle community? How can I bring this back to my digital communities that I interact with online and, you know, just really sharing this now these knowledges and perspectives. And so I would say that again, going back to the personal is the professional. I feel way more confident in, in bringing and merging these two worlds. And um, I think it's made my experience a lot more rich, a lot more fascinating. And, and people are interested, you know, in, in, in hearing, um, you know, your experience and your stories and making sure that I 
always embed that and interweave that into all the work that I do with my students down to the resources that I pick out. Like I'm, we're not just reading academic articles, we're watching film, we're listening to media, we're you know pulling clips from Twitter or maybe like a video that we've seen on Instagram that's a part of their real lives and their daily lives. And how do we bring that into an academic space? So I am really big on you know merging those worlds. Well, I would say you're definitely there's going to there will be a wealth of information about how to do it, um, you know, how to write your cover letter, how to write your research statement, how to write your teaching statement. And going back to the personal is the professional, I would say, don't be afraid to be, bring aspects of yourself into those documents like what led you to your research journey um how do you how do your lived experiences inform your teaching right um because i that is um not just what like sets you apart but that is what makes you a unique candidate because if you know there are going to be tons of research statements and tons of teaching statements that you know come across the you know the search committee but how do you um um, cause I think, and I'll, and I'll say this, I think, you know, there can be a lot of shame sometimes, especially if you're first gen and BIPOC, there can be a lot of shame around some of the experiences that you've had growing up. And, um, I don't, I don't believe that you should like put them on a platter, you know, your pain and all that on a platter. But I think that it's important to own the beauty of your lived experiences. And so, like I said, you'll get tons of resources, you know, even, I even got like handouts for ways to, you know, shape my research statement and teacher statement. And that's great. Like the the how to the methodical part of it but i would also say don't be afraid to like bring your spirit don't be afraid to bring your soul and um your unique perspective because based on being you know a first gen a bipoc student you have experiences and you've seen things and you've experienced things that no one else has and how does that when you think about you know uh, whatever your particular research topic is, how does your experience and what you, you know, the community that you grew up in, how does that shape your view about that? Not just the books that you've read in your doc program or not just, you know, the citations that you, you know, can, can draw on, but how does your identity, how does your lived, how do your lived experiences also inform that? And I, I also had a good friend tell me, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm analyzing and I'm doing this work. And she said, no, it's your perspective. And it's the way that you analyze it that makes you, you know, your perspective unique. So I would just say own, own that identity, own the beautiful experiences that come with that. And, you know, obviously, it, um, you know, as much as possible, try to embed that in such a way that, you know, represents you not just as a scholar or as a, you know, potential candidate, but as a, as a person.